Welcome to my beginner's fountain pen video. Before I get into the video, let me give you a warm welcome to the community and hobby that will probably send you bankrupt, as a lot of people, including myself, have sadly figured out over the years, spending a lot of money on... pens. Oh, there you go. Don't say I didn't warn you. In this video, I'm just going to give you the basics to fountain pens, and everything that I include in this video is pretty much everything that I would have wanted to find out when I first got into fountain pens. So let's get started with a quick introduction to the fountain pen and all its components. So a fountain pen is made up of several vital components, those being the nib, the feed, section, converter, and barrel and cap of the fountain pen. So the nib is what makes contact with the paper. A small slit in the nib is what allows ink to travel through the nib and onto the paper. The nib will sit on top of the feed, which regulates the flow of ink from the cartridge or converter to the nib to keep it the correct wetness and stop it from drying out. This is done through a process called capillary action. The feed and nib will either screw or friction fit into the grip section of the fountain pen, which will then have a converter screwed or pushed into that. The barrel will then screw into this section and the cap placed on top. With regards to a nib of a fountain pen, it's usually going to be made out of stainless steel or on more expensive fountain pens, it's going to be made out of either 14 or above carat gold or palladium. However, most fountain pens have a tipping material which is much harder than both the stainless steel or the gold and this is what makes contact with the paper. This is usually going to be made out of iridium, a very hard metal, and the iridium can be ground to different sizes to produce different line widths. This is called the nib size, and it's got a range from extra fine, fine, medium, broad, stub, and italic widths, with the medium being much more common for western style writing, and finer nibs being used commonly for people with smaller handwriting or Asian style scripts. Though I will note, nib sizes aren't exactly standard throughout the fountain pen industry, and usually one brand's fine nib may vary with another brand's fine nib, and as well as that, Japanese nibs tend to be a little bit smaller than European, American, UK, or Chinese fountain pens. Typically, the rule of thumb is it's going to be one size smaller, so a Japanese medium nib will be the equivalent of a European fine nib. So to get ink in the fountain pen, there are two simple ways to do this. First of all, if you're using a cartridge, which is a prepackaged ink cartridge, all you have to do is simply press the pierceable end into the back of the pen. The pierceable end will break and ink will start flowing into the feed. This may take a little bit of pressure, but there's no way you're gonna break your pen doing this. Usually the ink will take about four to five seconds to saturate the feed and move down into the nib before you can start writing, though I've had a few pens that have taken a few minutes to do this. However, if you are having trouble getting the ink to start flowing, one thing that I've done several times is slightly squeeze the ink cartridge just to get the ink flowing, though don't squeeze too hard otherwise the cartridge might split. If you're using an ink converter, you're going to need your own bottled ink. So simply place the nib and a little bit of the grip section into the ink and make sure that the piston is all the way at the bottom. Simply twist the piston to pull it up, creating a vacuum which will then suck up the ink into the converter. If you want to get a little bit more ink capacity, all you have to do is repeat this process once or twice and that will remove any air bubbles from the converter. Once you've done this, you can simply wipe the grip section with some tissue paper to remove any ink that's on the grip section. One thing you should never do when filling up a fountain pen is taking the converter out of the back of the pen and filling it up in the ink bottle and then placing the converter into the pen. And the reason being is that A, you're going to get ink in the back barrel of the fountain pen and secondly, if your pen has metal threads or the barrel is made out of metal, it can start to corrode the metal over time and corrosion is not good for a fountain pen because it impacts longevity of the fountain pen as well as weakening the threads of the fountain pen. So let's get started writing with the fountain pen. And writing with the fountain pen is a pretty simple process, though it might take a little bit of time writing to change your habits that you've picked up from using a ballpoint pen. So to write with the fountain pen, all you have to remember is to keep the breather hole of the fountain pen pointed up. And that's pretty much it. Don't try and rotate the pen in your hand because it really needs the gap or slit in the tines to make contact with the paper constantly. 
to ensure that ink is flowing onto the page. If you rotate the pen, the tines are just going to start grabbing into the paper and it's going to get really scratching. One thing that I'll say is try not to apply too much pressure. Ideally, fountain pens will write under their own weight, but if you do have to apply some pressure, it should be really minimal. If you apply too much pressure, you could easily bend and permanently deform your nib. Now, in terms of cleaning your fountain pen, it is a pretty simple process to do. All you have to do is get a cup of lukewarm water, ideally, but it doesn't have to be, and all you have to do is flush your pen, so pretty much get rid of all the ink, dip the fountain pen into the water, bring all the ink up into the converter and then flush it out and repeat this process a few times until the water becomes clear. And you don't have to flush your fountain pen all that often. I only really do it every time I change my ink and if I keep my fountain pen with the same ink for an extended period of time and that's really pushing three to four months, then I end up flushing it. But it's not really the most important thing to do nowadays because inks are pretty good nowadays. And that's pretty much it. Fountain pens aren't all that hard to use and they're not all that tedious. It may take a few pages of writing to really understand how your fountain pen works and to find the sweep spot, but they really shouldn't be all that hard to use. If you're a left-handed user, it is slightly harder because um, I know ink can smudge and you might need to change the way that you write, but I'm a right-handed person so I cannot really offer advice on that, but I do know that there are certainly left-handed fountain pen users and videos for that. But before I end this video, let me just address a few questions that I might get in the comments. So the first question that I might be asked is, my fountain pen nib is covered. And that was a pretty common thing. What fountain pen manufacturers used to do, and still sometimes do, is cover their fountain pen nibs to make what is called a hooded nibbed fountain pen. And what this will do is sacrifice nib flex for um, faster writing speeds. And while this is not very common, a lot of iconic fountain pens such as the Park 51 had this. In my opinion, I'm not the biggest fan of hooded nib fountain pens because they just don't feel all that nice, but you can certainly write a lot faster with these pens. So another question that I might be asked is, my fountain pen nib isn't flexing or it isn't flexing that much. And sorry to crush a lot of hopes and dreams for a lot of people, but a lot of fountain pens, especially fountain pens nowadays, don't really offer all that much flex. And if they do, it's not all that amazing. And the thing is, a lot of the GIFs you'll see on the internet with really cool fountain pens flexing, those are either going to be dip nibs or they're going to be vintage fountain pens when people used to do a lot of copper plate when fountain pens really needed to flex. But nowadays, a lot of fountain pens don't really flex all that much and you might need to get something such as a Noodler's Ahab to really get a proper flex nib. Now, here's the thing. I've tried to use flex nibs for everyday writing, and while you can produce some really cool writing with it, it really does slow down your writing speed and it bleeds like crazy. Another question I might get is, my fountain pen nib is scratching. And here's the thing, as a rule of thumb, the smaller your fountain pen nib is gonna be, the more scratchy it tends to be. Usually with an extra fine or a fine nib, you're gonna get a lot of scratch or feedback. And usually with a broad nib, it's gonna be buttery smooth. Now here's the thing, a nib being scratchy isn't terrible. Usually some people might want some people like feedback in their nibs, but if your nib is overly scratchy, or say if you have a medium nib or broad nib and that's scratching, you can certainly look up polishing videos on YouTube where people show you how to polish and remove the scratch from your nib. It's pretty easy. So another question I might get is, my fountain pen is writing and then stopping writing and then writing. A term that we call in the fountain pen community, skipping. And there are a lot of reasons why your fountain pen might be skipping. The first thing you might wanna look for is to make sure that the nib and the feet are properly aligned. So usually the nib will want to um, sit on top of the feed like this, properly aligned, and sometimes they can be misaligned in the factoring, and that can easily cause uh, skipping. Another reason that skipping might occur is there might not be enough ink in the um, feed of your fountain pen, so you might wanna just either twist the converter to push a little bit more ink into the 
uh, feet of the fountain pen or you might want to squeeze on the cartridge a little bit more to put some more ink in it. Another thing you might want to look for is a term called baby's bottom where the nib has been ground too much in the fountain pen factory and that causes a little bit too much nib um, tipping material to be removed and cause uh, a break in the ink flow which is going to cause it to skip. Like an overly scratchy nib, there are videos on YouTube for correcting this issue. So another question I might get asked is, should I use cartridges or bottled ink? And there are certainly pros and cons for each side. So if you want to use bottled ink, it means it's going to be much cheaper and economical for you. The ink's going to last much longer because you're going to be paying for about 60 mils of it, which can last you over a year. And as well as that, you have a much wider selection of colors to choose from. However, if you want to refill your fountain pen, it means you're going to have to have the ink with you. Now, if you want to use cartridges, it means it's going to be much easier to change on the run. So if you're at work or school, you can quickly rip out the cartridge and then replace it and then just throw the old cartridge away. As well as that, it's going to be much more expensive. Each cartridge only holds about a milliliter of ink, plus or minus, and you're going to be paying about $5 for five cartridges or about a dollar each, which means you're going to be paying much more than, say, paying $10 and getting 60 mils of ink. As well as that, you're also going to be limited to usually red, blue, and black inks. Another question is, can ink cartridges from one brand be used with ink cartridges from another brand? And here's the thing, a lot of fountain pen brands have proprietary cartridges and converters. So Parker can only use Parker cartridges and converters. Lamy can only use Lamy. Kaweco can only use Kaweco and so on. Though some brands do use other brands um, converters and cartridges. And there is also something called the Standard International, which quite a few brands use, such as Jin Hao and other Chinese manufacturers. What I'd suggest before buying a cartridge or converter is look at the fountain pen that you have and make sure it fits the converter or cartridge that you are going to buy. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching my video and I hope you have fun spending all your money on this hobby.